I had this grand plan. I would go to Oaxaca, Mexico, knowing no Spanish at all. I would take part in a Spanish immersion program with classes for eight hours a day for one week. And then after that one week, I'd be able to speak conversationally with people for the next two weeks of my stay. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Well, the thing is, I failed spectacularly. Hey there friends, I'm Matt, a joyful human who's working to live life on purpose. On this channel, we discuss how to live life more purposefully, mindfully, and effectively. Today, let's go over my failure to learn Spanish in one week. For those of you watching who may have learned another language or three during adulthood, you're probably not surprised that I didn't reach a level of being able to converse with other people with just one week of study. And I think a little bit of my history with languages may be helpful to fill in some of this backstory as well. The only language that I'm actually fluent in is English. That's the language that we use in my house growing up. My parents, they grew up in the Philippines and they actually are both fluent in Tagalog. They speak Tagalog to one another, but I resisted learning as a child. Maybe you can relate to this experience where whenever you're in a community, for us, it's we didn't have any other Filipinos around us. So I already look different than the rest of the kids. Most of my friends from childhood, most of my friends in general are white just because of the environment where I've grown up. And in that, I already look different. So I also didn't want to sound different. So I never learned. I actively resisted learning when I was a kid, which is a regret now, but I can't really do anything about that at this point except move forward. I actually first tried to start learning Tagalog back in 2017. After a few months, I flared out. I didn't really have the right systems in place and I didn't have the right why behind me. Fast forward to 2020 and I restarted my learning. Different teacher, different time. And yes, COVID happened and that probably helped with regards to being able to have more time to study, but at the same time, I had better systems that were in place. So I've been taking my weekly lessons ever since then. Besides Tagalog, the only other instruction that I had had was in Spanish and German. Both of those were in middle school and high school, and honestly, I was so afraid of speaking and making mistakes, which is a prerequisite to being able to learn a language, that I just never spoke, and so as a result, I never learned. I came out of those years not knowing anything from either of those two languages. Adding on to all of that, I firmly believe that I'm below average whenever it comes to learning languages. Now, on one hand, this just may be a limiting belief something where I have this belief and it's actually making it more difficult for me to be able to learn. So that could be something that I have to work through. But on the other hand, I think that it's also a pretty realistic view of just my history of what I've done because it has not come as naturally to me as maybe some other skill, some other task that I've taken on. It takes me longer to learn words, it takes me longer to be able to apply those whenever I'm actually speaking. So that's the background. And you may think, why would he think that it's possible for him to become conversational in just one week? And the answer is, I don't know. Maybe I thought that I was special because I love watching videos of YouTubers who go out there and they're able to speak with all these different people after just one week or a few hours of study. Or maybe it was just pride hubris. I got too overconfident because my Tagalog was really coming along, though I had forgotten that it took me a year and a half to even be able to get to the point where I am now. But either way, that was my mindset going into this. And I'm happy that I had that to be able to force me to go on this adventure because if I didn't believe it was possible, I probably wouldn't have gone. But on the other hand, it's something where I'm definitely working to check that ego and not be so overconfident for absolutely no reason moving forward. But ego aside, let's get into the actual work itself. I took the entire week off of work because I wanted to focus solely on learning Spanish. I wanted all of my time and attention to be there. I'm super blessed that I have a job that where I have PTO because that job is actually the thing that bankrolls all the activities like this. The school where I was studying also has accommodation, so I booked a room there for the week. Again, I wanted to have as much exposure as I could to Spanish. I studied from Monday to Friday, and so the days all went like this. Between eight and nine in the morning, there was breakfast for all the students who were staying at the school. It was a time to be able to converse, practice Spanish, and just really get to know the other people that were there, learn their stories. I was by far the most remedial student, so I spent most of that time listening, taking in people's Spanish, not understanding most of it, but trying to take in as much as I could. My first class was with Elvira, and it began at nine o'clock. It went from nine until 12 every single day. She was so patient, she was so kind of being able to introduce me to these most basic concepts, being able to say, yes, my name is this, I came from here, and even learning the numbers and phrases like that. After that lesson finished every single day, I would have a 30 minute break before I got into my second block. From 12.30 to three, I studied with Norma. It was nice to have different teachers because I got these different learning styles and then I also learned different concepts along the way. Again, this was very basic because it was my very first week, but there were slightly different concepts that actually I was able to use in different situations. This middle slot though was the most difficult because I didn't do a very good job of planning out my meals. So often I'd be going for many, many hours without any food and I could really tell that my mind was getting much more tired as the lesson went on. After class with Norma ended, I had an hour and a half break before my evening session. 
During that time, I would go and I would find a restaurant where I would study and practice my Spanish. It was mostly studying though and not much practicing Spanish because at that point, all I could really do was maybe order or say a few words here and there, but I really was trying. My evening classes were with Ruben and they were from 4.30 to 7 every single night. I'll be honest, we didn't really click as much at the start, but I'm so glad that I didn't allow that first impression to taint the rest of the relationship because he ended up being my teacher even after the first week and I'm so, so thankful for the way that he pushed me. Once classes were finished, I would find some quick food, I would study for an hour or two more, and then I would head to bed. That was my life for the five days. Pretty quickly, I realized how unrealistic it was for me to get to a conversational level. Before, I was focusing so much on the hours I was putting in. I was focusing on eight hours a day, I was gonna do 40 hours in that one week. But what I didn't think about was that my mind would probably not have enough time to absorb all that information and actually make use of all of it. Also, by starting off from scratch and going for eight hours a day, I don't think that was really the most effective route since I only did it for one week. If it was for a longer period of time, maybe it was for four or six weeks, I think I could have gotten a lot more out of it. But with that one week, I was struggling to be able to take the lessons from one lesson to the next. I had no basis. I had no words that I could even use. So it felt like I was starting over each and every time. That said, I continued on and I just tried to do the best that I could every single session. By the end of the week, I was definitely not conversational. I could barely get more than a basic sentence out. But this isn't on my teachers. They were absolutely amazing. They were so prepared. They were so patient with me the entire time. This one was completely on me and having unrealistic expectations. Though I hadn't planned on taking lessons after that first week, because remember, I am going to be conversational. I decided that it would be a good idea to continue the momentum. So every weekday after work, I would have lessons for two and a half hours. This was something where I had failed in my stated intention, but that doesn't mean that I should just throw everything in flames. That doesn't mean I should throw the baby out with the bathwater. This was one where I figured I'm gonna have two more weeks here. Let me see what else I can learn. By the end, not only did I establish what I hope is a good base for me to continue learning Spanish, but I also learned some valuable, valuable life lessons as well. The first is that striving for a large goal and then falling short is nothing to be ashamed of. I realized in my reflection that I had usually picked some pretty safe goals, goals that I knew I had a high probability of being able to complete. I made them as tough as I could while leaving them in the realm of the possible. This is the first time that I remember failing so clearly at something that I said I was going to do. And you know what? I'm still alive afterwards. It made me change my strategy moving forward to dream bigger because with the right systems in place and then with enough time, some pretty cool things can happen. And also with those new goals that I set, if I fail again, totally fine. I'll probably be further along than if I had just decided to play it safe from the get-go. The second thing is that language learning is a journey that I want to enjoy, not a process that I want to wish away when I'm just thinking about the end result. With Spanish here and really all my relationships with languages before, I was so results oriented. I was so focused on being conversational or fluent or whatever you want to be able to say there, where I think that actually hurt me in the interim because going through that process, it's not all pretty. It's not all clear. There's so many different unknowns and I really wasn't appreciating the journey. I was so focused on the destination. I was actually really helped by a video of my friend Izzy, which I will link somewhere up here, somewhere in the description below, where she was talking about her experience learning Mandarin, becoming fluent in Mandarin over six months. And what I appreciated about that was this transparency. It helped give me perspective because she said that she had been really purposefully studying for six to eight hours a day for six months before she got to that level of fluency. And so whenever I thought about it in that context, why did I think I'd be able to get to a level of being conversational after doing it for only five days? It was only five days. And so in that, it made me realize that I had this bigger picture. It made me realize that there's this longer story. And in addition, there was this other concept that she brought up and it was this idea of why, right? Why are you trying to learn the language? And if I'm being honest with myself, before I wanted to learn the language to say that I could speak the language. Sure, there were other benefits that came with it, but it was very much driven by that ego. But when I reflected and I really asked myself, so why do you want to learn this? I realized that it was about human connection. As I said at the start, I've only ever known English, so that's the way that I've been able to communicate. And the reality is, especially when traveling now, like English is the language that's used by so, so many people. So even if I was in foreign places, I'd be able to communicate with people in English. But in learning Tagalog and then now starting to learn Spanish, I'm realizing that there is something different when you're speaking to somebody in their mother tongue. It's the way that you're able to express and maybe even the way that they're able to express their customs, their beliefs, their culture. And so for me, that's now my why. 
And with that as the why, there's no rush. I don't have this rush to be able to say, yes, I'm C1 level, I'm fluent, whatever that may be. It's just about enjoying the process because as I'm learning, I'm also being able to connect with people throughout the journey. And the final thing is that I realized I really have not been pushing myself. Every single day, especially getting to the end of the week, my brain would be so tired. It would actually be throbbing. It would be hurting because of all the new information that I was taking in. And I don't remember feeling that. Even in school, I don't remember those feelings of taking in so much information and also being so uncomfortable for such a long period of time. I told myself, if you ever need an ego check again, just go to another country where you don't know the language and take part in an immersion program because I felt so dumb every single day. And in that context, I absolutely was. I didn't know any of that information. And in that gut check, it made me realize that I had been just seeking comfort for the last many years of my life. Living in the States, having a cushy job, having a college degree, all of those things, they've afforded me this comfort where it's actually made me lazy, it's made me a lot softer. And so it was a check here where I realized, okay, so you haven't been pushing yourself, what are you gonna do about that moving forward? That was one of the biggest realizations that I was able to take from just that one week. So for anyone considering a language immersion program, if you have the means to do it, I would so highly recommend it. At worst, you're gonna learn something about yourself, and if you're like me, you're gonna really push outside of your comfort zone. A place where I say that I wanna go, but I so seldom actually do. And at best, you can make a lot of progress in your target language. You can learn a ton about another culture and you can really make some new friends along the way. As for me, I may not have learned as much Spanish as I hoped, but I took away some lessons that I wasn't expecting that I know were going to materially impact my life moving forward. I may have lost in the micro, but I won in the macro. Now, if this sort of content vibes with you, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button for more so that we can continue this journey together. Either way, I'm sending you so much love, my friends. I hope that today you have the best day ever. Bye now.